Good idea, but just exactly. And I didn't wasn't that they scheduled it after that. I said, uh, give people the option. Exactly. I want to be able to pick and choose. Oh, yeah. But you got you got a chavrusa at least. Okay, other I'll bring it. Other one, take a few. You bring. Okay. I'm sure. Thank you. Okay. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> interesting things in this week's Parsha that um, that speak about different types of Ramazan that the Ramban if you look at for example the Ramban when it says Kisar uh, Tzilam Aleim Ramban says when they says that uh, their Tzilam, their, their protection has left them it says that Eev died, that Tzadikim died but uh, the Ramban writes that Tzilam, this refers to Sloshan Ramban, the Leila Choysim, that on the night of Ishaina Rabba, the sale of a person, the, like the aura, or the Chalukah de Rabbonon, or it's called, it's also called uh, Guf Dak, ethereal body, leaves the person, and then, uh, or 30 days before a person passes on, the Makifim leave a person. It's Ramban, the Ramban, the Rechaim Akadosh talks about it. And uh, there's also something about the Pasuk that says, Ekev Ruch HaKeres that, uh, what does it mean that there's a Ruch HaKeres, a different type of Ruach, a different type of spirit. So we're going to talk a little bit about this idea of Ibur. We don't understand what that is yet, but there's something that's called Ibur. Ibur means that there's uh, an impregnation. 
So the gather, the, the, the basic definition of the Ibur is that um, Ibur means, just like a, a woman that's Mubaris, so I'm going to, it's a funny way to think of this, but in, in Allah you have this, there's a Ramon, a Chassim Kippur, with regards to um, the Kaparas, which the Mechaba writes that it's Minik Shal Shtusu, but the Ramon um, says that it's a proper Minik to do this, from the Maril, that he says that if a person is a Mubaris, a woman that's a Mubaris, she should take two. Two, two, uh, two, uh, two birds, and uh, the Mogan of Rome over there brings down that according to the reason I should take three. Now, what's the idea of two? Two is because, so yeah, maybe she's in the cave, so maybe she's carrying a zacher, she's carrying a male, she's a female, so she her kapara applies for the, the, the female and the female possible child that she's carrying, and then the one for the male. But obviously, the question is. The question is that uh, the child is not a balavera. The child didn't do any sins. So what's 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 the kapara for the child? So the answer is really that it's it's kiilu. Um, the mother now has two bodies. Whether uber yerechim or not doesn't really matter. But the idea is that there's a tsura. There's one tsura, one form of her body which has her amachivarim. And then she also has another body within her that has a whole entire tzur, entire form of Ramach Evarim. So it's really kapara for the mother, but now the mother is too. You follow this analogy? There's a there's a gather, because you're not saying that you're doing kapara for an ch- unborn child, that the mother herself has to make a kapara for herself and kapara for the child, because she is like, now, ki'ilu, she would have two bodies. Um, that would be really the slur of the, of the at least... Uh, Certainly, the Sora of the uh, Magan of Ram and the Fanari, because you need three. So, I mean, one for herself, one for the possible male, possible female. Okay. So, what is the idea of a Mubaris? What's the idea in a, of, of being pregnant? Being pregnant means that you exist and you're carrying something else within you. But it doesn't, that thing that you're carrying within you doesn't overwhelm you. It's like you exist with something else as well. This is what this is what idea of Ibur is, and this conversation is a big conversation with regards to Ibur in terms of in terms of the beginning of the parsha. We'll see from the Ari. but if you there's a sefer over here that I have, which you probably don't know what the sefer is, but it's a from Menashe ben Yisrael. It's called Nishmas Chaim. It's a very interesting sefer. Menashe ben Yisrael was. Uh, was Dutch, but he was originally from Portugal. He's from the Migrashe, from the from the from the, from the, the, the from the Jews that were in Spain. Eventually moved to Portugal after the Spanish Inquis- uh, after the Inquisition, and they lived there for a few years. And then they were thrown out of Portugal as well. And they ran a lot of them ran to Amsterdam. And he's one of these children. And he wrote a sefer called Nishim Chaim. I once I, I once told you this that the reason why Jews are in America is because of uh, Menashe Ben Israel. It's a long story, but he basically convinced Oliver Cromwell to allow Jews into England and. Uh, Whatever the Jews are in the Western world because of, huh? Went to and they went. Jews went to England right after, right after him, right? Correct. David David Nito was one of the first Arbano there. Kuzi Asheni. Anyways, he writes over there on this on this Nishmas Chaim. Shemaiti al Aposik v'Avdi Kalev Ekev Oyi Ruach Acher Simoi. What does it mean that it, that Kalev was different? Because Kalev had a different Ruach, different spirit. So uh, Rashi says is that he really he said one thing and he really thought a different thing. So he pretended that he was going along, along with the story of the Ragna, but really he was doing his own thing. But um, he brings down Shamati Shnesabri Ima Ruach Acheres that there was a Masaber, he had a, an impregnation from another Ruach. And he was impregnated with another soul. And because he was impregnated with another soul, therefore Lepon Alat Samaraglam. This would, would mean this would mean Lepon Alat and this means that he didn't listen to the Meraglim. And then he says that uh, So why did Kalev go to Kivar Avis? Why did only, it says that only Kalev went to Hebron, to, to Mispalel. Why did Kalev? Because also Zachel Ruach Acher is Kamoisha Mevia that is all. He brings up Vatari, the same idea, Ruach Acher. So we want to talk about this idea of, the, of Ibor. What does the Ibor mean? But before we get to that, there's a in Perik Kuvav and Tehillim 
where it's a description of the, the entire Yitzhiya Mitzrayim story. The Pasuk says like this, that they became they became disgusted or on the land they didn't of this Eretz Chamda, this land of desire. And then the Pasuk says, Hashem swore, lifted his hands and made an oath to that they should die in the Midbar, which is the story of what happened. And then Lahapul Zaram Bagoim that they should be dispersed amongst the nations. Lahapul Zaram Bagoim that there was a Shvuah, Lahapul Zaram Bagoim there was a Shvuah because of the Chaita Ega, because of the Chaita Maraglim. There was an oath that Hashem swore that the Klal Yisrael is going to be now dispersed throughout throughout the land. Throughout the land. So it'll be, it'll be Golos. If you look at, and look at the Pasuk, in Parsha Shlach, the Pasuk says, <speaking in Hebrew> Hashem says, okay, you're, you're going to think you're going to be forgiven. But, <speaking in Hebrew> But, like I take, I'm, I'm taking an oath, Chayani, that what? Vimalek Kweid Hashem is called Aretz. That the Kweid Hashem, the presence of Hashem, will be filled with this, filled in this world. What, what's, what, what's the statement mean? So Rashi says that this means that uh, that they're not going to go into Eretz Yisrael. But what does it mean? Vimalek Kweid Hashem is called Aretz. That the Kweid Hashem will be filled the entire land. What's the oath? The oath is the Klal Yisrael that that the Kweid Hashem. The honor of Hashem will be, will be revealed throughout the land. What, what's, what's, they, they, they don't do, the Moroccan come and say they don't want to go to Israel. So Hashem makes an oath and says, what's the oath? That the Moloch Kweit Hashem is called arts, that the Kweit Hashem is going to fill the whole land. Like, what, what is, what's the connection? Chayani. So there's a medrash, the medrash Seichel Toiv writes that this refers to Golos. The Moloch Kweit Hashem is called arts. Kweit Hashem, the glory of Hashem, refers to Kal Yisrael. And which means that Klal Yisrael will be dispersed throughout the land and that's the way Kweit Hashem will be revealed that there's a reason that Klal Yisrael will be throughout different types of older exiles and by being all through different exiles that's the way Kweit Hashem will be revealed in this world okay so what what's the original plan so the won't be Kweit Hashem all these arts let's say Klal Yisrael went into Eretz Yisrael and they they didn't listen to the miracle and, and and the story didn't go that way and they went entire to start with Moshe Rabbeinu, and they didn't die in the midbar. So it wouldn't be Molech Chodesh Kol Arts, Kol Arts. What does that mean? What is that? How, does, how do we actually understand this? Okay, so to understand this a little bit, just one other yisoid over here is like this. There's a big machlokes that are showing him whether whether we're born into greatness or you have to achieve greatness. Are you? Well, we'll talk about it, what that means. But let's in very simple language: Is there something about just being born a certain way, and therefore you say that you are vested with a certain type of quality that makes you distinguish from other people just by 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 your birthright? Or let's say it's, they'll, they'll take the shittas Raman, They'll take the opinion of the Raman. The Raman would say, and Hilchas Shuvah, that every person could be like Moshe Rabbeinu. I thought it says you can't, that, that was never a person like Moshe. It means your, your she'ifas could be, that if you really want, you have pchir, you have choice, and you can make, you can reach the highest possible level that you can reach in this world. So Moshe Rabbeinu with a peak, you can become like Moshe Rabbeinu. That would be the, the shittas harambam, and that, and those, and, and that ilk. And that, the shitta of the philosophers, let's say, the chokrim. There's a parallel shitta, there's a parallel system, which is the system of the kuzri, where the Sefer Kuzi already establishes that there is something that's called an innate spiritual potential already that you have. That, um, that just by being born a Jew, you already have something that you have a certain type of, it doesn't call it a neshama, but you will call it, let's say, we'll call, in our language, we'll call it a neshama. That means you're born already with something, a special type of quality that's innate. Meaning, even before you did anything, it's already innate potential. This idea of the Kuzri became the most prominent idea, most m- m- more prominent, but especially when it comes to the Torah Sasoid and, and the teachings of the of the Ramak and then the Arizal. In the Torah Sari, there's going to be this idea, which we'll see soon, that there are, there's the Shamas, all the Shamas come from 
Adam Kadman, which is Adam Adam Rishon Kadim Achat, that all rooted in that in that in that neshama. It's actually a, it's a medrash in, in, in Bamidbar Rama also that all neshamas come from Adam. Now, in in that itself, Dari would say that there's certain neshamas come from Adam post Chet, post Chet Etzadas. There's certain neshamas that are born in this world that come from pre Chet Etzadas. And then there's something that I recalls. There's something that's called neshamas chadashes gemuris. Neshamas chadashes gemuris, like real, true, new souls, is neshamas chadashes gemura is someone that's his soul is is, is mushash beyond the etzadas. So there's neshamas that come from beyond the etzadas, beyond the tree. Then there's neshamas that come from the tree koyd machet, which are called neshamas chadashes. And then there's neshamas yishanas, old old neshamas, and neshamas that come laacher achet. Which means, if you if you just take this and translate this, what this actually means is that there are certain people that are born. Now, of course, a person has pchira, but there's certain people that are born innately that they're born that the, with the language of the of the Ari is rachuk min achet, and there's people that are born kar lachet, which means there's certain people that are born that they have a natural disdain for anything that's of this world, and they're born like they're they're born sadik. Now, it doesn't mean they don't have pchira. Because they still have here, but it's it's kar of lezer or rachik lezer. It's like it would the natural inclination would be towards moving towards becoming a tzaddik versus being the opposite. And some people were in the opposite direction, which is it's more kar of lera and rachik mitoiv, and and it's a more difficult conversation. Okay, this would be in Torah Sari that it's really taking the Torah of, of the kuzri and understanding this and to say that there's actually you're born with a certain quality. Now Torah Sachsidus. So you hear the Torah of Hashem, which one of the things that we're talking about a lot is the Torah of Hashem. And what what does Torah Sachsidus come along? The, a main theme in Torah Sachsidus is so it's actually this is going to be like a dichotomy. It's going to be like two opposite sides. On one hand, certainly with the, with the, with Talmud Yamagid and uh, and the Noyim Alimelech and a lot of the Tzadikim and, and that and, and that school, there was it talks about the person that's born a Tzadik. There's a person that's called the Tzadik, and I think is you have to be dovik the Tzadik. The Tzadik is a Tzadik. The tzadik means something is someone like you're you're born a Tzadik. Okay, maybe you have here to unveil that potential, but you're born a tzaddik, and then that's on one hand. On the other hand, the whole idea of Torah Sachsidus, of Torah Sabal Shem, was the democratization of spirituality, which means that every person could reach the highest madrigan. So how does that work? How does these two systems work? In other words, if Chassidus came to teach the democratization of of spirituality, which means every single person can reach the highest levels possible because you have a neshama, all this language that you will say that you can reach the highest madrega. Then, if it's overlaid on the system of Dari, and it's not like, let's back this up. If you say there's a system of Darizal, the way Darizal revealed in the world, and along came the Torah of Hashem, and revealed something else. Okay, so it's not a steer. Okay, this, they said that. Darizal said one thing, and the Balsha and the Chassid said a different thing. It's fine. But we don't understand this. We're, we're, we're understanding it that it's actually further and deeper revealings, right? It's not just an idea, it's a truth. And it, the truth becomes deeper revealed and deeper revealed and deeper revealed. So if the truth of the Arizal was revealed in his time, then the truth of, of Torah Sachsidus was revealed in, in, in his time, in Torah Sachsidus, it's not the, the elimination, it's the, it has to include also that, that teaching. So how does that work? How does Sachsidus work? And here you see something, here we're going to see something very interesting how this, how this works out. Okay? So this is going to be the, the, the scheme of the general idea we have to get through. We'll start with the beginning of the parasha, and it's a, it's a Shiloh that Rizal asks, and it's actually a klotzkasha. Klotzkasha means that it's a Shiloh, a pshat question. It's not a Shiloh, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a soid question. It's a very simple question. In the beginning of Shiloh HaMiraglim, in the beginning of Shlach, so the Torah says, Shlach HaKon Oshim, the Moshe Ben has to choose, Ani Yerim Tzavcha, Shlach You have to send according to your own desire, because ultimately, but we're not going to get into this conversation, ultimately the idea of of, of Aretz is not that they should be miraglim, not that they should be spies how to get into the land, right? The Torah never calls them spies. It says losses are. Losser means to to see. They're meant to go see the land, to see if it's the land is a good land. If it's a if it's a shmeino to see if, if the land is a, mil, a land of milk and honey. If it's actually a fat land or it's it's a it's a problematic land, which means they were supposed to experience seeing what type of land it is. Not that's a whole the, the Ramban says Ephes because the, the, the whole thing is Ephes because he said they can't you can't enter that so but they they were they were not it wasn't a mission it wasn't a reconnaissance mission it wasn't a mission to figure out how to enter enter Israel 
right? It was an admission to see the land. Why do you have to see it is another question. But they have to go see the land. And the Chizit Shesorim, because it's the Nas of Anishma, like the Nishma part, that you have to not only accept things, but you have to actually understand it. Okay, so whatever, we'll leave that a second aside. But if you look at the Shloch HaMaraglim of, the, of, these, of, these, of, these, te- of these, these, these people, first of all, it's not really a question, the, the, the reason is a question, it's a Pshat question. The order is totally not, doesn't make any sense. It starts with Reuven, Shimon, Yehuda, Yisachar, Yosef. Like, what's the, are you, either you go, there's two ways how to count the Shvatim. Either you count them according to the Golem, according to the, how they are camped, like in Bamidba, right? So there are four camps, so you count each camp first. That's one way. Or you count them according to the, the according to the, the Imois, who get, had the birth. So you count all the B'nai Leia first, right? But in this, this order is a little strange. And the Ramban asks this question. Ramban says, according, they're according, according to the Achshivas, maybe, or the Sephora says, maybe who was older, which is problematic because it seems that they were young, young people. But let's just say there's, there's an order. But what's interesting is if you look at the, the first, first it says Reuven, Shimon, not Levi, obviously, Yisachar, then it goes to, to Ephraim. So what it says to Ephraim, it says, Lamate Ephraim, Meshei Benun. For the Mate Ephraim, who's, the, who's going to be the, the Miragel? Who's going to be the spy? He's going to be Meshei Benun. Then it goes Lamate Benyamin, Lamate Zvulun. Then when it goes like this, Lamate Yosef, Lamate Benasha, Kadi Ben Susi. Lamate Yosef, to the Mate of Yosef, to the Mate of Menasha is Gadi Ben Susi. So why, when it comes to Ephraim, it just says Lamate Ephraim, Meshei Benun. Why does it say Lamate Ephraim, Lamate Yosef, Meshei Benun? So this is a, this is a posh question on Pshat level. And here's what the Ari writes. If you look at the first page, the Ari asks the Shailan a long, big Arichis. And um, okay, um, where do we go over here? He knows I think we skipped the page. Oh. Okay, you see over here the second column. The second, the second paragraph. I'm sorry, the right column, the second paragraph. This is from Sharp Sukkim and Dari. Yudal of Shvatim, the Sarbim, Yudal of Shmeragim. So the Rizal says that there was an ibur, an impregnation of the Yudal of Shvatim, when it says Lamati Reuven, and then it says the name of the Shevet. The Reuven himself was Miss Aber, became, became impregnated into that person that was going as his representative. So Lamate Ruva means Ruven himself. This Arbum Biyud Aleph Miragnam. So the, there was an Ibur, which means, we don't understand what that means exactly, but there's an Ibur means there's an impregnation of the Neshama of Ruven into the Miragal of Ruven. That, but Shavu Levi not. Shalai Nachal Baritz. Levi was not sent, because Levi doesn't have a Chelik and Aritz Yisrael. Avam Mukayim Neshalak Shifto Shom Yom. So what happened? Shavu Levi Yosef. So Yosef was divided into two. Menashe and Ephraim. But Miragal Shom Menashe and Nesar Ben Nishmas Yosef. In Menashe, Menashe got the one Gadi ben Susi received the neshama of Yosef. Why say Yosef Lamata Menashe? Because Yosef Lamata Menashe went into Gadi ben Susi. Okay, Yachas of Yosef and Menashe Lo Hayes Mashem Marnu because that was an Ibur of Yosef. Nisha Yeshua Meragel Meshevet the Frei believe when Nishmas Shum Meshevet. So therefore now Yeshua Benon is going for Shevet the Frei, but he doesn't have an Ibur of one of the Shvatim. So therefore, the Why is Moshe Rabbeinu davening only for Yeshua? It seems like some type of nepotism. He's his Talmud, and he's davening for him. And if you're really worried that the Miragam are not going to work out, don't send them or daven for all of them. He davens only for Yeshua. So the, the Ari says, the reason why he's davening only for Yeshua because he thinks that if Ruvain, the Shevet Ruvain, Ruvain himself, the son of Yaakov, is Mesaber in, in, in Gadi ben Susi, it's going to be fine. We're not, I mean, in Menashe, well, God, this is, it'll be fine. You're not, it's not going to have a problem. The only person that's going with no protection, extra protection, is, uh, is uh, Ephraim. Yeshua Benun, for Ephraim. So therefore, so, so therefore, he's in Svalim. So, who him shechal of Nishmas Levi ben Yaakov. Therefore, when he said he called him a name, what does it mean that he calls him a name? He called him a name. Moshe Rabbeinu is a Levi. So he drew down the Nisham of, of Levi into him. That's what that's what the that's what the the Arizal says. Okay. Um, 
this is the idea of that there was there was an Ibor, and the Ibor was only into into Menasha and not into Ephraim. And Yeshua didn't get an Ibor. Okay, so what what is the what is the Ibor? What's the, what's this? So you have the Ibor. So if you look at the next thing, it's Mishara Gugolim from Dari. So the result is like this. There's, let's think of it like this. There is other Mauritian called Machat, okay? And before the Chet, so in, in the language of Chazal, if you look in the Gemara Chagiga, there's a Gemara in Sanhedrin, when the Gemara talks about it, it says that, that, that we use, that other Mauritian was Miktzeir and Maktzeir. <laughs> that he was like he's he was to the length of the world and to the length from one end of the world to the other end from the horizontal and vertical and then lacher achet is smite other mission shrunk okay now what is it, what does that actually mean what does it mean that he shrunk so you say like this that kaitem achet before the chet other mission is in a state of yichud of one 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 wholesome being, one being, okay? The whole idea of a chet is separation. What does chet mean? That uh, that, he, that he, he separated, that um, he takes mi period. So the Zari says that mi, peri- mi is mess. Mi period means when he separated the period for the eights. By, by that in itself, this, the separation from the, of the fruit from the tree is the is the origin of the idea of the chet? Chet is the idea of of separation, separating obviously from yourself, from Kadosh Baruch Hu, from others. The the oimik of the of the separation, the immediate separation, is that he ate miperio, which created mavas, you created death. That's a separation. And what happens when he when he when he chose when he chose one thing, when he chose that that one period? I don't know if this is coming out clear. If you look at the Torah, and you talk about the Eitz Adas and Eitz Eitz Achaim, so what does the Torah say? Where is the Where is the Eitz Achaim? Besechagan, yeah. So where's the pasuk? Well, it's Besechagan. Yeah. You can have a gan love nashav. It's always looking at the land of We call Eitz Adan Echot Achal. You should eat from all the trees. But you shouldn't eat from the tree of of the of eight Wait a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we get that, pasuk does like this. Okay. It's the middle of a statement. The the Torah is saying is where were these trees? The 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 Hashem made trees. Right, and the Eitz Achaim, the tree of life, was Besoich Hagan, was in the tr- in the garden. The Eitz Adas, Toivera, and the tree of life was good and evil. And and where was it? You're telling me where the Eitz Achaim is, right? The Eitz Adas, Eitz Achaim. You you probably see what the problem with this pasuk is. The Eitz Adas, Eitz Achaim, Besoich Hagan. The Eitz Adas, Toivera. Toivera what? The Eitz Adas, Toivera. So the Reb Tzadik and other Tzadikim write, and this is this is the, really the truth. The only way to put it's pshat. That actually, there's no two trees. It's not. There's no Eitz Achaim and Eitz Adas. It's not two separate things. Eitz Achaim is Besech Hagan. There's Eitz Achaim Besech Hagan. This Eitz Achaim also has the Eitz Adas. What does it mean that it has the Eitz Adas? There's the tree of the everything, and there's the tree of the something. The moment you separate the everything, the something from the everything, that's Avodah Zarah. That's the Chet. The moment you trap, right? I say Hashem's presence is everywhere. If I say Hashem's presence is this table, it's Avodah Zarah. But if I say Hashem's presence is everywhere, it's not Avodah Zarah. Why? Because if I separate the something from the everything, that's idol worship. So Me'etz HaChaim is the tree of life. Me'etz HaDah Toivirah means the tree of opposites. Hashem saying, there's one tree. There's only one. There's only Etz HaChaim. The moment you're going to make a choice between Toivirah, which means you're going to make a choice of, of separation, and you're going to live in a place of Pirud, and you're going to choose something from the everything, then that's going to be actually Toivirah. You're going to die. 
because it's going to be the opposite of life. So this is why the Ari says that really, Moshe Rabbe, uh, Adam Rishon was supposed to eat from the Eitz Adas, just on Shabbos. And it was an issue of patience. He should have really waited and we'd eat on Shabbos. What's the difference if we would have eaten the tree from the Eitz Adas on Shabbos? Because since Shabbos is Yichud, Rosh the Shabbos is, is Echad, Shabbos is one. If you would have eaten the tree of the opposites in the world of the one, of Eitz Achayim, then it wouldn't have been a period. I'll give you another way of, 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 fra- of phrasing this. this um, it's from the Moir Hashem, as she writes, that if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you say, I like this and not that, that's a choice of Eitz Adas Tevera. If I say, I like everything, because Hashem made everything, but I like it, that's a, tr- that's a choice of Eitz Achayim. So on Shabbos is Eitz Achayim. It doesn't mean that you don't, you don't eat, you don't eat good, good food, but I, because I shall make good food too. So I'm enjoying everything that I shall created. You understand? The moment I separate myself, that's the idea of the period. The period creates the separation, which creates the Misa, which creates... Now, what does that, what does that have to do with Adam Khan, with this structure? So in, in the, in the Toyo Sari, which is, again, is based on the Medrash, if you, if you, and, and the Gemara, if you say that Adam is, is Mekzeya, what does that mean? It means that Adam, Adam the source of Adam, contained everything. And there's no separation between Adam and the world. He's one. Not literally, but there's no separation. He's living in the Eitzachayim. The moment he ate from the tree of Eitzadas Tevera, what happened? He shrunk. There was period. So shrinking the period is sort of like, if you would imagine, it's like taking a, a, a picture and then you pixelate it into, <coughs> into, like a, into an image. And then, then the, the, you break it apart. So now it's like a puzzle. So it's a pixelated puzzle. And now every single part of the puzzle, if you put back the puzzle, you're going to get the entire picture. Every single neshama is one part of that puzzle, right? And we're trying. What are we trying to do in this world? We're trying to mezachich our avuch ba'may have a zoritve. There's a zoritve. There's a certain refinement. We're trying to refine our particular spark, which means our nitzosek becomes our neshama. If we can, if we, if we, if we elevate that spark, let's say you're you're struggling with anger. Let's say for example, yeah. And this is like your negative thing, so your side. Uh, this is like your ne- negative. And you also have, this is your challenge. You have another challenge. Let's say these are, these are the challenges that you have. And you overcome them. So now this part of the nitzvah of neshama becomes refined. And that's already worked out. So it's already, it's always garbage. It's already worked out. So already it's refined. Which means that now this part of the neshama exists as a state of pre etzadas. Remember we said there are three, three types of neshamas. The neshamas, what the Arizal calls, chadashes gemuras, which is the neshamas that come before the Eitz Adas, which are mushes and Eitz Achayim. They come from the place of Tree of Life. There's neshamas that come from the Eitz Adas, which is the place of separation of Chira. But in that in itself, there's neshamas that come from Koydem Achet and La'achar Achet. When you La'achar Achet do a tikkun for your neshama, and you work yourself out after, for 120 years, you're working on yourself to refine your midas, to refine yourself. After 120, that particular spark that you live is now perfect. So after 120, that nitzutz is a tzaddik. I, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a funny word to use, but it's a tzaddik. In other words, if a tzaddik means something that is pre chet etzadas, pre chet, or even pre etzadas, it's, it's etzachayim, which means that it's in a state of perfection, if you work to you put back your piece of the puzzle, to refine it in such a way that now it returns back into the, into the surah of Adam Khan. It's like your piece of the puzzle goes back into the great puzzle. So that part of your neshama, of your own self, is now the tzaddik. So it's, 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 it's maybe sometimes people don't reach it fully in this lifetime. Okay, so then you have to go through a process of whatever happens after 120. But le'yidduch men nidduch, eventually your spark will have to get back and be refined and cleanse to the place that it belonged in the beginning. That's the Ruch HaTashav HaShem Nesana. Ruch the Neshama has to get back to its original place. Are you following this, this, this pattern here? Which means that in your next life, so to speak, there are part, the part of you that was already worked out in the previous life is actually a tzaddik. If, if there's a Gilgal of your Neshama, let's say in one lifetime you're working on anger, Okay, that part of the neshama was refined, and it's already elevated. It's mezuchach, and it becomes now refined. 
that part of the neshama goes back into Adam Khan. And the next, a part, a part of that neshama breaks itself off and now comes down to the next life. And now this life, you're working on lust, let's say. I don't know, whatever. And you refine yourself. So there's a part of you that is already completely refined. Which part of you? It's part of your neshama, part of your collective neshama, which is already in Gan Eden, that already worked on anger. So how does that actually translate into your own life? It means that in your life, anger is not an issue. Some people struggle with anger. Some people don't struggle with anger. Why? If you say that everything is, like the shit is a Rambam, right? If everything is basically according to your Bechira, according to my what I put into this world. So why do some people struggle with anger? And some people are very passive. They're not angry. But they have other problems. They have other issues. Why? Because in that aspect of yourself, already from your past life, that has already been worked out. So now you receive a spark of that neshama for your your neshama already from that spark has already worked out. So Taki, you don't just don't struggle with anger. So you're the tzaddik ki'ilu with anger. You follow? You're not a tzaddik, let's say, with with another mida, and that's why you have to work on the other mida. Okay. So so what is an ibur? So an ibur is like this. There's two. This there's, there's, there's a few types of ibur. An ibur means like this. You are let's say struggling with the particular mida that you're you're dealing with. Everyone, you're dealing your own life. You're dealing with this mida, and you're having a hard time with it. You, it's possible for you to become pregnant with another person's neshama. Which person's neshama you want to become pregnant with? So, so this, there's a few different types. There could be an ibur from, let's say, like the, the language of the Ari, could be from Moshe Rabbeinu, from Avraham Avinu. We'll see how you do this. But you can get an ibur from their neshamas. And what would the ibur do? Let's say you're struggling with this particular midah and you don't have the strength to do it. So then you become impregnated. Impregnated means that you don't become, the neshama of that, of that other neshama doesn't become your neshama. Right? You're, you're you, you're just holding another being in your being, like a woman that's pregnant. You're just holding someone, your, your container, it's holding another person's face. You're holding this neshama in, in your existence. This neshama, like a pregnant woman, exists for a certain period of time, and that, and, that, and that is discharged. So this neshama will be in you for a certain period of time. That's Ibor. It stays within you for a certain period of time, and then leaves you. So sometimes people say, you know, I remember, like, when I was younger at this time, whatever in my life, there was like a half a year that I really felt really connected. I, realized I was really, and I was davening really well, and I was learning really well, and then I just all petered out. It's possible. I'm not saying it is, but it's possible because you had an ibur. There was something that you had that you were struggling with it, and you draw down an ibur into your life, so you actually had an ibur. And which ibur? Again, it can be an ibur of a tzaddik that you're connected to, of a press, of someone, of someone that already passed away. It can be an ibur even of your own self that's already passed away. <coughs> and the third type of ibur, it can actually be ibur mechaim. It can actually be an ibur of someone that's alive today. Someone that resonates with you in a in a, in let's say in in a the Ibor is always going to be something that you're going to need for your particular journey, a particular challenge. So sometimes you meet a, that this is what this is what it's going to talk about David Yohannesan, that they, they that they they that it's Dafka Rucha that became like one. What does it mean one? So that he says that they actually experience an Ibor of each other. Which means that sometimes two friends or two people that are close to each other, people that like each other, or in the same you know, same group of people, and they say, like, you know, this is something I really need and I can get from you. I mean, you don't actually have to tell the person to do this, but you're just being in their presence and you, and, and it's possible that the other person's the shaman will have actually an impregnate you for a certain period of time. Let's just see the way that Rizal writes this. So, this is an Shara Gigulim Agdama Beis. It's always temporary. It's always temporary. See, uh, yeah. It's possible that in a Shama that was already mis- that was already mitukin in this page. Already mitukin is already for, already perfected in his past life. And it's possible upon Efshi's Gagu and the Fashas of Shoinim. Ada Varmavin Ola Shom. Kvitikim is Dachas Nefesh Adam. Zeshu Gil Lachim Nikir Etzel Chachomim Say the Eber. What Arizal says, what people call um, uh, Gilgul Machaim, like a reincarnation during life, that's the idea of uh, of a Ruach. And the, you're, and you and you draw that and you draw down. If you look at the next page, uh, 
Okay, so the first thing, first thing just on the line before it says, Afilu Bdurenza Yachalias, that the that, Arizal that is saying that this is something that actually happened today, it's not something from the past. But in the bottom, he says there are two reasons for this Ibar. There's two reasons for this interconnection. Echelus, like Kedei Ibar, Nefeshat Sadiq, Beishayit, is talking Nefeshayit, Mazdaf, 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 one is l'sayel loisim mitzvah gedusha yaseir. One is that the reason why there's an ibur is so to help the person receive what they need in this life. That's one level of ibur. He says there's also another possible ibur. L'tilayis atzadik atzmoy. That the tzadik himself needs an ibur. The tzadik needs that's already perfected. It's on the bottom of the page. L'tilayis atzadik atzmoy l'sabur b'kivin shumaseil l'sayis mitzvah tikkun v'noyta chelik b'hem. Since the tzadik now enters into the body, an asham without a goof cannot do mitzvahs. So the tzaddik needs a certain type of elevation. So the tzaddik is misaber in the person. And therefore, it's karl v'schar v'rochig lehefsid. And and when the when the tzaddik reaches his, his madriga, then then he disappears. He he he, he uh, trucks it, Right. Either it could be about you. Two types. Two types. In other words, either you're struggling with a particular area. And you're saying, I, I really want to do this mitzvah. I really want to do it in a correct way. I don't have the koyach. I try it. I'm, and you daven. And through, through davening and connecting yourself with that quality of your own nefesh, you draw down a nefesh that's already perfected on that particular midah. And that can go then all the way to other Mauritian and, and to, to Avraham Avinu, to Moshe Avinu, is what the Arizal is saying. Or it's possible that the tzaddik sees that, you know what, I see this guy, he's like a really good belt stalker. And that's something I actually was missing in this life. I'm talking a big tzaddik and I'm a big Ganadin, but if, you know, if, I can get in, if I can just join this guy for a little, a few days and give out staka, it would be a big elevation for Manishan. So the tzaddik is actually misaber for their own purposes. Misaber in you, to, but, when you're, but you, experience, you experience it as a, a strong um, elation, as very strong. Uh, um, it's not something that's overwhelming, but it's empowering. You feel like empowered. You feel like, you feel like, that you receive something that's beyond you. And beyond you, by the way, could be you. That's what we're saying. It could be an Ibra of your own self that already mm-hmm. exists in its past life. And it already got in. But you feel like, it could be five minutes, by the way. This is not, we said a day, two days. It could be five minutes. In the middle of davening, it's all of a sudden you feel like a wash with some type of higher intention. You feel like you're really, really connecting. And then after Shmanazi, you feel like, what's just happened? And it all disappeared. Maybe it's possible that you had an Ibra. You were davening and you didn't write Kavana, and you Kavana, whatever you were saying, Slach Lanu, or Atachin Lan Das, and then it all of a sudden it came, and it was an Ibra, an impregnation of an Hashem that came down to your, into your, into yourself. In the next source, he brings up the Chesla Avram. Chesla Avram is Avram is Uloi. Avram is Uloi is the Zayda of the Chido. It, it's really, the Chesla Avram is just writing, rewriting a lot of the teachings of Darizal, but he just writes it very, very clear. So he says that and then You can actually masig. You can have a saga. You can actually feel what is the the, the ruach of Avraham Avinu. If you say that Avraham Avinu, the Sefer Bar says that uh, the Midas Chesed was was jealous of Avraham Avinu because he took over Midas Chesed. What does that mean? It's like you're so overwhelmed with with Chesed. You're like Mamish that you're the pillar of Chesed in this world, and you say, "But I'm not really. I'm just, I'm just a regular guy." I, 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 but now you feel like that. You just feel like you're just, or you feel like anything. You feel like you're really, really connected to that thing. Yitzchak, Gvur, Tiferes, whatever the thing is, it's possibly getting your misaber. On a very high level, this is all. This is called positive ibur. Positive ibur is exactly positive ibur. Exactly, I have to get to that very quickly, but we'll get to that. So positive ibur is a very positive thing, and you feel a. It's very, you know, it's a good feeling. Elated. Yeah. Yeah. Same word. Yeah. So I just want to say that there's another thing, there's a parallel to this idea, which is called an ibura, a negative ibur. Um, the Ariza on Sharuch HaKodesh talks about this, he calls it Choyla HaNoifel, which is like epilepsy or something like that. So Choyla HaNoifel was considered, it was, very, it was considered a very royal, uh, 
disease, you know. The Rambam says that I'm a sugar now you do, I'm a hammer because he was quite a But it was considered like a, a, a royal disease because all the royalty in, in Europe had epilepsy because they married each other. Like Ashkenaz and Kendrick Milk, it's the same, the same sugar because everyone married each other. You don't know that, but 90% of you are all interrelated and therefore you're, therefore you're, you're, you're lactose intolerant or other things. This is like what, it's, it's what, issues. What's the relation? Huh? What, what's the relation uh, like the because they yeah. married each other. The, 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 so what? Uh, the Rebbe's like, yeah. What does that have to do with the milk? It's a certain. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, all Ashkenazi yeah. Jews are. So, yeah. No, it's a genetic thing that what's mutates. The no, it's someone had it, and then they married each other, married each other, and everyone married each other. And the next time, everyone has it. But like a Marshall Svard, won't have it. Svard won't have it. And it's quite a lot so the Ariza calls this the Ariza calls this Chayla Neufel, but the famous word that we call it is called Dibuk. Uh, so this is a very Dibuk. Dibuk. First of all, where does the word just very quickly? Where does the word come from? Everyone knows Dibuk. Yeah, there was a f- famous play Dibuk. And this. So everyone the idea of a Dibuk. Where does it actually come from? So the 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 first source that I found is uh, is a Sefer Abris. Sefer Abris, if you're not familiar, is a very, it's very hard to quantify the Sefer. It's a Sefer that some Sefer actually made his Bach and Yeshiva learn. Uh, a lot of big people actually felt that the Sefer was a very, very important Sefer. It's sort of like a book on philosophy, geometry, science, Kabbalah, a little Ashkafa. It's like as a mix of, it was, it was a Yid with a Rav in, in Vilna, and he wrote the Sefer, and he wanted like for Yeshiva Bach to be educated. So it's like the most, it's, 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 I don't know, it's kind of, it's, I, I think it's a little strange. It's a little strange. Huh? About the world. The world. This, so instead of, instead of only knowing Gemara, 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 he said that you should learn this. And by the way, I'm telling you, big people, the, the, the grow, I mean, the Chum Seifer actually, they learned in Presburg. They wanted, they, they made a shir, they, should, they, should, they wanted Bachem to learn it. It was a Seifer that was Miskabel. It was a Miskabel of Daily so. I don't have it. I don't have, I have it in the house, but it has like big askomas, different big people. Today it's totally out of vogue. No one reads Sefer Abris. You have to be like a weirdo to read it. But Sefer Abris is. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna learn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, don't read Sefer Abris. No, I'm saying, yeah. No, the point is they reprint it constantly. It's a Sefer that's constantly reprinted. I don't know who's buying it, but people buy it. It says on one of these farm. It's like it's like a. It's it's fun. It's a it's an interesting Sefer. But in Sefer Abris, he brings down this whole thing about uh, a dibuk, and he actually, I think, is the first one, one of the early ones, to actually use this language, because they, in the, in the Gemara, it's called ruach ra. That's what the language of the Gemara, like in the Gemara beginning and 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 and, and, and getting, it's called ruach ra. That's what Chazal called it. It's a chayla nefesh. It's a ruach ra, like a bad spirit. Like a what does it mean? Bad? Literally a bad spirit. So this dibuk, we all know what it is. huh? This we all know what. It yeah. Is. So okay, exactly. So the dibuk, the chilik, the different, the difference is like this, like this. That the, the, the basic difference between kedusha. And klipa is very, very important to understand. By the way, you can. This is a good way to gauge whether a person is holy or not. I'm just telling you, this is a good way to know. Kedusha, the koyach of kedusha is the koyach of liki, the koyach of the boyer. So therefore, the koyach of kedusha is the koyach of allowance, of giving, of furthering, of empowering. The koyach of klipa is to overwhelm, to take, to receive. Just to, so, when a person has an ibur of kedusha. They don't feel overwhelmed. They actually feel, they, they feel overjoyed. They don't feel like they're, they're overwhelmed by some, another force. They're being taken over. On the contrary, they actually feel that they themselves became greater. They just don't know why. Why do I become so great? Why do I become so smart? Why do I become so armadavani? You feel like an extra dose, but it actually feels like it's coming from you. Because that's what Kedusha is. Kedusha is the allowance of the, the, of the vessel, of the kli, to actually become even more. What's a koyach klip? The koyach klip, the negative side, is something that overwhelms you. That's, that's, it takes you over. So a dibuk, what the idea of the dibuk, or being possessed, whatever you want to call it, the idea of a dibuk was that it overwhelms, it overwhelms the person, and you can't, you say things that you don't want to say, and you speak, you do things that you don't want to do, and most of the time, like the Sefer Bruce says, it's actually just meshuga. By the way, the miyat koyim is meshuga dibuk. That the truth is, most times, that a lot of times uh, people are just not well. You know, there's a maisa with, uh, with the brisk, with the uh, with the prime. That there was in, in 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 Brisk, there was a woman that said that she was uh, she has a dibuk, she was possessed. So they came to the Rav, the Rambam Brisker. Rambam Brisker was not a makubal kiyin kiyedua, and uh, and he looks at the lady and sums her up, and he was very smart, and he says, okay, I have a perfect uh, kabbalistic uh, method for you. In those days, it was the first time the alarm clock came out. 
and the only people that own their alarm clocks were their abundant because they were, you know, that's the only game of some rich guy, an alarm clock, but no one had an alarm clock. This woman never saw an alarm clock. So she said, he, the Chaim told her that you should go to sleep tonight, and if you hear a very loud sound coming from this Kabbalistic machine at some point in the night, you know that's the sound of the Dibuk leaving you. And he set the clock for 2 o'clock a.m., 2 a.m., and on Moifus, the woman was cured, and, uh, and everything was. So you have to know that sometimes it's just like a psychological issue, and, uh, and there's a, there's a vote. Rebchaim Velozhin has said there's going to come a time that even, there's not, even Dibuk's are not going to happen. We're going to be in such a low state that uh, even Dibuk's are not going to be real anymore. That we, we you know, Dibuk is like not even a good thing, but like even Dibuk's are not going to happen. So this is, this is the idea of, of the Dibuk. So the, there's, there's an Ibur, an Ibur means an empowerment, which is positive. That's an Ibur, Ibur Machayim. It can be from your own self, from the Tzadik, from your own Neshama, or even Machayim from life. And a Dibuk is the, the, is the opposite, which is, is the opposite. So it comes out like this, that, um, that, uh, that um, a person yeah, is either born with, with a neshama chadasha mamish or neshama chadasha geburis, which means they come from pre 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 the eitzadas tevera. They come from the place of eitzachaim. Okay, so these are neshamas that come down to this world. These are mamish chadashis mamish. What's, what's called chadashis mamish, and then there's neshamas that come down that are pre chet eitzadas. That's also neshamas chadashis. No. Not Gemurus. And then there's a, most people in the Shamas that come down already in the distilled version is like post Chet Etzadas, and therefore they come down with struggle. Okay, so there's a person that's born like sort of on top of the mountain and struggle. Then what Dari is saying is that it's possible that a person is working with, their, with the struggles and they're struggling with a particular area, and if the Mazachet is self enough, it's possible that they would get an Ibur of what? Of someone that's already worked out. Either in the Shamas of, uh, of Ramavino, which could be probably, probably, probably is the Chadash is Gemuris, which is quite quite them, or it can be even your own Nisham, but it's already a Nisham, but it's already perfect, which means of a tzaddik. Okay, so there's basically there's what in in the language of the Alter Rebbe, and the Alter Rebbe writes in Tanya, the language would be that there is there's a tzaddik, right, and then there's a benini. So there's a tzaddik, which means a person that's already that's born a tzaddik that has a, a baras tzaddik. We'll see in a second, and then there's the benini, is a person that's struggling. And these are the two characters. And we'll say one is pre chet etzadas and one is post chet etzadas. And it depends where, you, where Mushrash, where Nishama is, whether you're going to be a life of struggle or be a life of no struggle. So the Alter Rebbe starts tiny like this. We're just going to read the last few pages. Tiny Basei Perek Nidin Nidin. So the Alter Rebbe starts Tiny Basei Perek Gimel Nidin. We learn the Basei Perek Gimel Nidin. It's got a not a tiny, it's not a brysa, but the Alter Rebbe calls it a brysa for other reasons. Because it's a clipper. Anyways, Mashbi Moisei Titzadi. There's an oath. That the Dishama has before it comes down to this world, and says the heat side about to your Russia. Uh, that you should be a tzaddik about to your Russia. This is the, this is the, this is the quote. The question is, let's go further. The so go go like it's like fifteen lines down. The Gemara says in Baba Basra. And then the Vashutfim, there's a Gemara that talks about Eve, right? So the Gemara says that Eve said, Rabbi Nishalim, Barasa Tzadikim, Barasa Rishayim. Hashem, you created Tzadikim, you created Rishayim. Eve is like, is, is tining against Nebisha and saying, you know, we don't have to hear this. Barasa Tzadikim, you created. So Eve is saying that there's a Barasa Tzadikim. There was a creation of the Shamas of Tzadikim. But the, the Chazal also say that when the, 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 the when the, when the angel of birth uh, takes a, it says, it says that he can be wise, not wise, etc. He says all these things, but it doesn't say if you can do because that, that is comes. So, what the Alter Rebbe is asking, this is the question. The question is if you say Barasa Tzadikim, that there's a creation of Tzadikim, what do you mean the creation thing? That's going, this is what the is saying, right? There's an Ashamas, there's certain Ashamas that come, that are Mushish. That are the rachuk minachet by by nature by birth, which means the brasa tzadikim. The people certain neshamas are people that are tzadikim. If you say brasa tzadikim, so how does that come together with saying that uh, that uh, tzadik rasha loy kamar, that a combination mind that it's tzadik rasha loy kamar, and then it's the question is if you say brasa the tzadikim that Hashem created tzadikim, so how could you say mashbim oisetit tzadik? How could it be an oath to say that Hashem before your neshama comes out this world says swear to me that you're going to be a tzadik, but I can't be a tzadik if I have a neshama that's tzadik according to Ari. Then I could become a tzaddik. I don't want to become a tzaddik, and I can't become a tzaddik. So what's the oath? What's mashvim ba'isetit tzaddik? You say mashvim ba'isetit k'moy tzaddik. 
But he says it's mitzvah tzaddik, and then he says barasa tzaddikim. They're contradiction. This is this is the beginning of the soy of the Alter Rebbe's Tanya, and in the end of Perik Yudalad, the Alter Rebbe writes like this. So he talks about that um, that uh, tzaddik gomor. What? I heard the Baal Tanya writes later by the Gav. You can. Yeah, you can. You can become a tzaddik. Right. It's a gift. It's a gift. Right. And, and what's the gift? The gift there's in two aspects. One is that is the mal's bira, like the disgust with things that are negative, like an avera, and and then there's avatanugim. Avatanugim is like the a love, a, like a, of a, a, ple, a, a highest level of pleasure in in a mitzvah. So there's positive and negative. That's a person that lives like a tzaddik. A person lives like a, in a state of amadush in a place of pure pleasure of, of dvekas. So the altar like said this. So. When a person is margal himself, which means he trains himself to be disgusted by things that are negative. The truth is that after, if you think about it, you can, you can become a little bit more disgusted. And if a person is, is margal himself, works on himself, and ruggles himself to to, to meditate on a godless Hashem, with an awakening of below, it awakens a, a sort of layla, an arousal from above. And maybe, maybe, what you're going to do is that maybe through your desiring that I want to be a tzaddik, I want to live like that level, what it's going to do is you're going to draw down Yara Ruch Mimarim. You're going to draw down the Ruch Mimarim. The Yisrael Ruch in his Ruch. Mishayish says it's Tzadik. She's Habar Belav Hashem. And you're going to draw down the Tzadik to become a Simcha Mitis. So therefore, you can say it's Kaim Ve'Emes and Shvuah Ti Tzadik. Mashvim Ve'Emes Ti Tzadik. Because and then you can actually affect then Mashvim Ve'Emes Ti Tzadik. What the Alter Rebbe is basically doing here is he's marrying the Torah of Rizal and Torah of Hashem in a very interesting way. Because in Torah of Hashem, in Torah of Rizal, it says this is what you're born. And this is who you are. Your your lot. Your 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 destiny is to be a struggler. You're the baby. You're the guy that's going to struggle for the rest of your life. And that's the way you're going to live your whole life. One day you have up. One day you have down. One minute you one five minutes you have good. Five minutes you have bad. And it's a kafakala. You're moving back and forth. That's that's what you think it is. That's right. This is what this is what you struggle. Then there's another person say this person is like, I want to say it's actually within yourself as well. There's certain things that you know that. I struggle with this issue, but my other friend struggles with something else. And that issue I don't even struggle with. I don't know what the guy's talking about. I'm totally fine with this thing. I'm not a judgmental person, let's say. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not judgmental. I don't, I don't have a judgmental vein in my body. This guy is like judgmental. I'm trying to work on myself the whole time. This guy, I don't even know what you're talking about. This guy is... Lo- I don't have... Lo- I don't, you understand this? Every person has their own struggles. So you know that there's actually a part of you that's the bane in the person that's the struggling part. And then you say that there's a person that's born already a tzaddik that doesn't have to struggle. So the Alter Rebbe is saying is, wait a second, Mashbimo is a tzaddik. If ule if, ule, if there's a shvua, if there's an oath that says that you have to you have to become a tzaddik, means that's what you have to strive for. And the ule haive ule, if you know a little chesedish language, ule is a derech efsher. A derech efsher of a tzaddik is a is a vada. This is this is obviously right. So if he said it, you know, maybe the maybe is a certainty. You know, there was a, there was a maaser that. Um, I'll tell you the mice, the mice is like this that the, that the Rebbe Hashab once told over his son, the Ayats, once told him over a minor, and told him a mushroom. The mushroom said, the Ula Yeshleimer, maybe I could, you could say the mushroom is something like this. And he, he told him a mushroom. And then later, his father told him, the Rebbe told him that I heard you chazed over this minor to other people, and you didn't say that it's the mushroom is with the Rebbe He just said, and the mushroom is. And he says, but I told you the I said, maybe you could say that. And you just said, he says, Dina Derech the is Amir Avadai. You know, if you said Derech Hefshir, if you said it, maybe, but your maybe is for me of certainty. We could say the same thing also here. Vula Hai Vula, with Alter Rebbe says maybe, for us it's already certainty. What's the certainty? The certainty is that if that's what you really desire, which we should all desire, because Mashbi Mashiti Tzadik, the Alter Rebbe is saying is, yeah, maybe you don't have an Hashem that comes from a Tzadik, right? And there's different Hashem, and Hashem comes from Kodem Achet, Achet, and all these things. Yeah, and you're talking the person, the struggler. But if you make a choice in your life to live like like the non-struggling part of you, even within the struggling parts of yourself, because in the non-struggling parts of you, you live very easy. You don't struggle. 
But then you have the struggling parts of you that you're, you're all twisted out and bent out of shape because how can I do it? My it's hard. Wait a second. The other things you manage here at Tzadik, you can do the same thing the same way. If you choose to do that, maybe you weren't born, you weren't gifted with, with the Tzadik at birth, but Ulahai vi Ulahai, there's going to be a revelation of the Tzadik and you'll actually become the Tzadik you want to become. And this is this is the Torah of Hashem. That you have to, you have to, you have to, even in the Torah Sari, we were saying that there's a delineated and there's a system. This is the way it works, this works. But if you truly desire something in your life to live a different way and to live a higher way and take a dohoib in a way, we're zoicha take to be the tzaddik that we should become. Oh, exactly the same word. Uh, what? That's that's exactly it. Uh, we didn't answer the shilos in the beginning. We'll have to do that uh, next time. Right.